Thanks for staying with us. More on the coronavirus outbreak. A Kenyan judge has suspended flights between Kenya and China and ordered the states to prepare a plan to prevent the spread of the virus. China's Southern Airlines flight had been suspended since February 11, but that suspension was lifted on Wednesday when 239 passengers arrived in Kenya. The Law Society of Kenya then filed a case asking the court to suspend flights again. The court found in favor of the Law Society. Society. Justice James Makau suspended the flight for 10 days and ordered the state to prepare a, a plan on the prevention, surveillance and response to coronavirus. The plan is to be presented in court for scrutiny. To other stories now, Guinea is preparing for the vote on Sunday on the country's constitutional referendum. This vote could allow President Alpha Conde to stay in power for 12 more years, fanning fears of unrest in the country. At least 30 people have died since October in protest against the proposed constitutional changes, and many are bracing for more trouble on Sunday. President Conde's first election victory in 2010 raised... Uh, uh, progress in the former French colony after two years of military rule and nearly a quarter of a century under authoritarian President Lassana Conte, who died in 2008. But Conde's critics have accused him of cracking down on dissent and violently repressing protest uh, charges he has denied. <laughs> Welcome to our Africa Tech segment. The federal government of Nigeria has approved that $268 million in funding be dispersed to support young technology innovators and in agricultural enterprises. This was made known by the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibaju, during a meeting with the Presidential Enabling Business Environment, where he announced a $2 million technology fund for young innovators approved by the Bank of Industry. The Vice President also announced a 90 billion naira uh, soft loan facility for small-scale agricultural enterprises which will be dispersed through the central bank of nigeria these funds are set to drive the government support for msmes in the country and boost productivity in non-oil industries Now, Olani Adeoshun, founder of Total Infotech and Telecoms Limited, joins us now to discuss more on this. Uh, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Um, so this is not the first time the government in any capacity has created funds for the tech industry or SMEs. What makes this different? Um, I, I must really commend the government for the efforts they're making on trying to ensure that they open up the system for people to be able to access funding. You know, but the major problem is the fact that all of these things are done in silos. You know, th th there's no coordination, you know, in the things that government is doing. So we should probably wait for some time to probably see what they're trying to do that is different from what they've always done, you know, concerning what they're doing right now. Well, there are doubts about how the, the, the funds will be managed and disbursed. How will the young innovators and MSMEs get access to the money? Um, well, that's, that's part of the silos I talk about. Okay, I'll give you a typical example. Um, a few years ago, during the visit of Mark Zuckerberg, um, I was privileged, my company was actually privileged to be one of those who won um, a financial grant um, from the World Bank for, for one of our tech innovations. And um, there were gaps, there were a lot of issues. It was the ABDD um, um, tech um, grant award at that time. You know, and some of us got these grants and some of us didn't get. And we started wondering what exactly what went wrong. So we went on trying to find out, you know, trying to find out what the details were. I can tell you that it was all messed up, you know. So part of the challenge really is we're wondering how government intends to do stuff and do it properly. You know, they have good intentions, but it seems that the way they go about what they're doing does not seem right. Well, this time around, how do we ensure the funds go to the appropriate quarters? Okay, if you ask me what I, should, I would recommend, um, the, 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 way, the way you have to um, evaluate tech startups 
is predominantly different from how you evaluate a regular business, maybe a typical SME. Now, we have very typical situations because the gestation period for the kind of things we do takes a longer period of time up to the point of profitability. Now, so if you ask me, part of the things I'd recommend is the government must be willing to work with those who have raised funds before. There are loads of them out there. I don't want to mention their names. Um, they're there. So we need to get back to these guys, ask them they should develop a framework through which tech startups can be funded. You know, but the typical way um, when money comes is you probably push them through the commercial banks to do those appraisals. But the commercial banks are not designed to, um, to evaluate businesses in tech. It's a new area for us, you understand? So for them to be able to work with this um, properly, they'll bring people who are already in the tech space, who have access funding, who understand how to access funding, develop a framework that will specifically you know, be designed for those who are in tech to be able to go through those scrutinies, then they can access these funds. Well, let's shift to focus a bit now. Uh, what is your opinion of the Nigerian startup ecosystem? How have we fared? Um, I would tell you that it's getting better um, and it's going to get better, you know, um, the way things are going. Um, I, I, I like, one thing I like about this government is the fact they're taking it seriously. You know, they're, just, they're not just mouthing it because if you look at what the um, Office of the Vice President is doing, um, it's something they're taking a bit very seriously. So I can say that things are improving. When you look at what has happened in the couple of years from way back from um, 2016 up until this period, you find out that the government is serious about talking about technology. They're talking about SMEs. They're talking about um, uh, micro, micro businesses as well. So I think there's something interesting about what, what's going on right now. You know, but the major challenge is for them to be able to articulate what exactly they're doing and try to get proper results. Well, according to Intelligence by TechPoint Africa, in 2019, over $377 million was raised by Nigerian startups as against $178.3 million raised in 2018. But there seems to be more foreign investment than local. Why is that? Um, when you look at it, it seems, you see, because when you look at the, the space we work in, um, tech is basically from outside of this country, right? So they seem to understand how it works, okay? Um, the guys we work with, you know, from Silicon Valley and from everywhere in the whole world understand how technology works. i give you a typical example. Um, I had a conversation with a guy who owns um, Gokada. And he's never been to Nigeria before. He, he said he saw Nigeria and found out that Nigeria had, has a lot of, a huge population, you know. And the next thing he thought about in his head was that this is a market. So he tried to reach out to one or two guys who have a Harvard background and got one or two of them, you know, did some kind of interviews on LinkedIn and started to talk to people in our system. You know, now, so he got himself into the country. Now, there's something Nigerians do not see. Nigerians do not see the benefits in being in Nigeria, but a lot of people out there see the benefits. Now, one of them is the quality of population that we got. So population is a lot of market. You know, so they seem to see those things all right, and they want to take advantage of it, and that's why you find out that there's a focus on Nigeria that, because so Lani, the there. there's so much, so much to get through on this conversation. It's been a very interesting conversation, so, but I'm afraid we've uh, run out of time. Uh, Mr. Lani Adilshun, founder of Total Infotech and Telecoms Limited, uh, thank you so much for speaking to us on Africa Tech. Thank you, I appreciate this opportunity. And that's the program today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Tenyo Lash Shubo Ali. Have a lovely weekend.